get mantra and meditation mp3s at jasongallant.ca. Today let's talk about freedom, liberation, and enlightenment. As you venture upon this spiritual journey, you'll discover more and more subtle ways in which you have placed yourself in a prison. Ways in which you don't measure up to your opinion or you don't measure up to the opinion that you've been taught about what you should or shouldn't be. You know, the societal restrictions. Maybe these restrictions or these opinions have been echoed inside you from your ancestors or your culture. But your natural state exists regardless of what anybody's opinion or anybody's idea is. And that's really what we're pointing towards. We're pointing towards the natural state that has always been there and is immortal. It doesn't care about opinions. It doesn't care about ideas. It just is. And when you recenter back into this and remember this, immerse yourself in it, meaning your ego is immersed in it, what happens is you are no longer restricted. You're no longer imprisoned by your own opinions. Those just fall away. A level of fulfillment just to be what you are emerges. That becomes enough. More than enough. This is freedom. When you realize that what you are at the deepest levels, at the deepest level, is more than enough. It is absolute. This experience can be quite supernatural and can have many different flavors depending on what is unraveling as you speed towards it. But this is enough. Some people call this peace. As you realize this deep level of okayness and fulfillment within you, with your natural state, you start to realize how unreasonable it was to place stipulations upon it. The ideas and opinions that seemed so reasonable to you before about what you should be or shouldn't be, all of a sudden become ludicrous. You realize you've always been okay. Why the hell did you come up with all these ideas of why you're not? You start to reject the conditioning. You just, the conditioning is no longer valuable to you. You've become free of the prison of conditioning. Now, one of the reasons why this is great not just because your experience of life becomes so much more fulfilling, because you're no longer seeing it through the eyes of conditioning, you're seeing it through the eyes of your freedom, is that because you see that this conditioning or this prison wasn't reasonable for yourself, you no longer seek to impose it upon others. You know what a prison is. And you're like, why would I put other people in a prison if I don't like a prison? So although this experience can be very peaceful within, you will notice that at some point there may be conflict without. Because you'll see how others believe that you should be imprisoned in their conditioning.
once you taste freedom within, you will not settle for imprisonment on any level. You may be able to find that internal freedom, but in the end, external imprisonment will no longer seem reasonable to you. This is probably why we know many spiritual masters who have been crucified, hung, burned at the stake, etc. As a kid, I never really understood this. I thought, well, why, if that person was so amazing, why would they do this to him or her? It's because they rejected slavery. They knew freedom was their truth. Freedom was their natural state. And the imprisonment that they were placed in, in society, was no longer reasonable to them because it was not in alignment with the truth of the universe. So if you do experience conflict as you seek to untether yourself from the external prisons, know that this is absolutely normal as you evolve and discover deeper unconditional truths within you. You will no longer settle for the imprisonment based on others' suffering, such as say someone is imprisoned in their own fear, and then they seek to say, hey, I'm afraid of all humans. I wish them to die because they make me afraid. Well, if you are one of the victims of this person in suffering, you would defend yourself, and that is okay. It's okay not to be enslaved by others' suffering. That's what I'm saying. You are the one seeing the truth, experiencing the truth, and the truth will move very much in a way that looks like freedom. All spiritual masters talk about liberation. Well, liberation from what? Liberation from the prison. The matrix, as Neo referred to it. <laughs> liberation from the prison of the suffering that is driving you to be in that prison. Maybe it's your own suffering, or maybe it's the suffering of others. But know this, liberation and freedom are deeply related. In the end, I'll say conflict is unavoidable. After all, much of your life that you have created, when you were in suffering, matches that suffering, resonates with it. And as you discard that suffering within, you'll find out that the external may not match anymore. Perhaps it's time for a new environment or that environment to evolve in some way, but there is some conflict that can come from this, and that's totally normal. It doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. It doesn't mean that the, somehow uh, you're supposed to go back into the prison of enslavement with people who say, hey, you should suffer because I am. And this is one of the most challenging parts about the spiritual journey, and one that is often not talked about, but it is a very real phenomenon. And I do believe this is why many of the yogis went up and left all their families and left all their friends and went up into a cave and meditated. And that is where they sought enlightenment and freedom from the constraints of society and the expectations of others. But in this day and age when you can't find a cave and you're stuck with your same old neighbors and, uh, and people around you, it's like you have to meditate, go within, realize the deeper truth, and then slowly integrate externally. And yes, there will be some conflicts along the way. And I'll just say to forgive yourself as they come up because it is normal.
just know this. The one person who realizes the truth will always be seen as the enemy by those who are in illusion. So I hope this helps you on your spiritual journey. Take care for now. If you find yourself in a place of not knowing what steps to take or what to do in your life, or maybe you're meeting some challenges, perhaps mantra practice is for you, and there are some mantras which will help you in finding a deeper level of wisdom in understanding what you should do in any one moment. And one mantra may be the Gayatri mantra, which brings spiritual light to your intellect. Another mantra may be the Ganesha mantra called Vakrotundaya Hum, which is great for straightening things out and, and working things out that are not necessarily working properly for you at this time. And another mantra that you might want to consider is the Mercury mantra, which is Om Brahm Brim Brahm Sa Buddha Yenamaha, which in short is about getting from point A to point B in the most efficient way possible. So sometimes that means getting to the solution of something as quickly as possible and figuring something out. So these are great mantras for wisdom, although all mantra will help you with wisdom. But these are the three that come to me at this time that may help you expedite the process. So I hope this helps you out in your journey. Thanks for watching and uh, Feel free to check these mantras out on this channel or on my website, jasongallant.ca. Are you interested in working with a spiritual teacher in a formal setting? Well, perhaps the Wisdom Life School is for you. If you're interested in checking out what the Wisdom Life School is all about, just go to aratima.com.